Welcome everyone, it's Christian from Elise today, and today we're going to go into the fascinating world of comparative advantage. Now, have you ever wondered why all the most successful economies in the world are such strong traders? Think about all the cargo ships outside Singapore, Hong Kong, or even the iron ore ships heading into Port Hebden in Western Australia. Or just simply why every single politician just wants to talk about trade. Give us Tim Tams, we give you, we give you penguins. Uh... The, the reality is, everyone's talking about trade. But why on earth do we do it? The answer lies in comparative advantage. Imagine a world where there's two countries, Australia and Indonesia, and they produce two products, wheat and rice. Let's assume Australia has an absolute advantage in both wheat and rice. This just means that Australia can produce more of both wheat and rice in comparison to Indonesia. I mean, let's face it, Australia is four times bigger than Indonesia. In this example, we can assume that Australia can produce either 60 units of wheat or 30 units of rice. And for Indonesia, it can produce either 20 units of wheat or 20 units of rice. So, if we put their production possibilities, what they can produce on the chart, it would look a little something like this. So as we can see in the chart, the more Australia produces of wheat, the less it can produce of rice, and the same applies to Indonesia as well. So, let's just choose any point of the time on this line, and that can be what our current production is. So we're gonna choose a point here for Australia, and then a point here for Indonesia. So if we plot on the table, in our current state of our economy, Australia is producing 40 wheat and 10 rice, and Indonesia is producing 10 rice and 10 wheat. So in our economy, in total, we have 50 wheat and 20 rice. So that is our current economic situation. Now let's move on to the first step. Step one, calculate the opportunity cost. Now, the theory of opportunity cost states that if I produce one thing, I'm I can't produce another thing. So in other words, if I have wheat, I can't produce a certain amount of rice. But you can also apply this beyond economics. For example, will I buy, if I buy a PlayStation, I can't buy an Xbox, or even in your own personal life, if for a jog, I can't go and watch Netflix. Both equally important, of course. Now the formula of opportunity cost is a simple formula where you put what you lose over what you gain. So in this case, if Australia were to produce one unit of wheat, they would lose either 30 units of rice over the total gain of 60 units of wheat. So in other words, one unit of wheat is going to equal to 0.5 uh, of, of rice. Now, let's do the same for Indonesia. The opportunity cost, again, is what is given up over what is gained. And for Indonesia, one unit of wheat equals to either 20 units of rice that we give up over 20 units of wheat in which we gain. So therefore, one unit of wheat equals one unit of rice. Now, if we plot this on a table and do the same calculations for rice, we can calculate the opportunity cost for both wheat and rice for Australia and Indonesia. Step two, determine the comparative advantage. Now, the theory of comparative advantage states that a country should produce what it has the lowest opportunity cost in. So if we go back to that table that we saw earlier, if we plot it out, we can see for wheat, Australia can, has an opportunity cost of 0.5 rice, whereas Indonesia has an opportunity cost of one rice. So therefore, Australia should produce wheat. Now, if we go to the opposite and look at rice, we know the opportunity cost of one unit of rice is two wheat for Australia, or one wheat for Indonesia. So therefore, Indonesia has the lowest opportunity cost and it should produce rice. So there you have it, that's a comparative advantage. Australia to produce nothing but wheat and Indonesia produce nothing but rice. Step three, calculate production. So in the earlier step, we determine what has the comparative advantage. Now, if we follow that step, Australia to produce nothing but wheat and Indonesia produce nothing but rice. Let's have a look at our economy. Australia is now producing 60 units of wheat and zero rice. And Indonesia is now producing zero wheat and 20 units of rice. So if we add it all together, our total economy now has 60 units of wheat and 20 units of rice. So how does this compare with our old economy? In our old economy, we saw 50 units of wheat and 20 units of rice. 
So our rice has remained the same, but something strange has happened to our wheat. We've got an extra 10 wheat. Got extra wheat. <laughs> Step four, determine an exchange rate. So we've got specializations, both countries producing what they're best at, but now we have a little bit of a problem. Australia wants a bit of rice and Indonesia wants a bit of wheat. So how do we determine an exchange rate that's appropriate so that both countries benefit? So let's go back into our previous step where we talked about opportunity cost. So we know that for Australia, the opportunity cost of producing one unit of wheat is 0.5 rice. Whereas for Indonesia, the opportunity cost of producing one unit of wheat is one unit of rice. So in other words, for Australia to gain, it must get more than 0.5 rice for every unit of wheat. Where for Indonesia, for them to gain, for every one unit of wheat, they should give up less than one unit of rice. So, for an exchange rate to make sense, one unit of wheat must be higher than 0.5 rice to benefit Australia, but less than one unit of rice to benefit Indonesia. So let's choose a point somewhere between that curve and we're going to go with 0.7. So one unit of wheat equals to 0.7 units of rice. Step five, trade for a surplus. Now that we've got our specializations and we've got our exchange rates, we can trade a little bit of our surpluses so that both countries benefit. So we know our exchange rate. So let's say for example that Australia is going to trade 14 wheat. So now 14 wheat at exchange rate of one unit of wheat is 0.7 rice. That's going to equal to approximately 10 units of rice. So Australia trades 14 wheat, says, here you go. Indonesia provides 10 units of rice. So now, what's happened to our economy? Australia now has 46 wheat, but now they've got 10 units of rice. And Indonesia has now got 14 units of wheat and 10 units of rice. Our total amount in our economy has remained the same at 60 units of wheat and 20 units of rice. If we compare our old production with our new production, what are we seeing? More consumption of wheat. <laughs> so that is how we determine comparative advantage, how both countries can benefit. Even though Australia's got an absolute advantage, it can produce more of each good. It is benefiting from trade because it can now consume a bit more wheat and have the same amount of rice was Indonesia is also benefiting trade because it's now also consuming a bit more wheat for the same amount of rice. So both countries are benefiting. We can also always adjust the exchange rate so that maybe there'll be a bit more rice and the same amount of wheat, or we can have a little bit more wheat and rice. It's really up to the exchange rate, but the purpose of this is to show that when we trade, everyone benefits. So the next time that you think about your opportunity costs, think about what you can specialize and what you can trade to benefit. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, my name's Christian and I'm one of the co-founders of Elucidate. Elucidate is a non-for-profit organization aimed at ensuring every student has the support they need to achieve at school. To learn more from this course material, click here. And to learn more about what we do and the work we're doing to support students, as well as to donate, click here. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.